Well, hello folks and welcome back to the Frontier Western Heritage Channel. I'm Todd Kessner here outside of Bozeman, Montana at the gun range and we are in a series about pocket pistols. And so uh, if you've been following this series, you would have seen the Smith & Wesson 1.5 and, and 32 caliber. You would have seen the uh, 1849 Colt pocket revolver in 31 caliber and, and the energy that they produced. And, and we're taking a look at uh, different pocket pistols that were available in the 1800s and really the, the power that they uh, that they'd produce as far as the self-defense arm. And so the last video that we did was with this Smith & Wesson number two single action. And the number two single action is a 38 Smith & Wesson caliber and uh, totally different caliber than the, than the 38 Special or 38 Colt, which are all kind of in a lineage together. This one is, is completely separate and uh, didn't really like the results of it. This is a five shot, a uh, gun that uh, that that really felt good when you shoot it. It's balanced well. I was really excited about it out here at the range with that last video. Really went and put the numbers together for energy, and was disappointed. Very disappointed. And a couple of factors may have influenced that disappointment. One is that didn't have the right. I, I, all I could find is modern ammo, so I had to pull the the bullet out pack it with black powder, put the modern molly coated bullet back in. So it wasn't the proper bullet, didn't have a good black powder bullet lube on it. The other thing was is that I historically this 38 Smith & Wesson, according to the old boxes that are, that are available to, to view uh, either in a collection or on the internet, said 15 grains of powder. So I took 15 grains, ran it through a two inch drop tube in that case and it barely fit in the case and I had to compress it severely. And so that severely compressed powder may have been a factor as well. It was so compressed that it, was, it turned into a solid pellet. Some of the cases I even bulged and couldn't get into the, into the chamber. So disappointed with that. Don't know if it's the extreme compression, which didn't help probably. Might be the, and it probably is, the, the modern molly coated bullet that didn't help either. And so as the following got, you know, as we shot, or as I shot, the following got stiffer and stiffer and more and more. And so there just wasn't anything to keep that following soft, which I could notice when I cleaned the gun. So I wasn't satisfied that that was a fair test of the 38 Smith & Wesson in this number two uh, single action. So went back to the drawing board, went on the internet, found a, a vendor, Matt's Bullets out of, out of Arkansas and, and online and look through the, the bullets that he had there. Well, he had a bullet that said, if you are looking for a historically correct bullet for the Smith & Wesson 38, here it is. And so it was a, it's a 361 lead bullet, it's 150 grains. A lot of the historical ones were 145, so it's awfully close. Does have a very deep and, and, and uh, pretty good grease groove. So I lubed that up. I had, had uh, Matt's bullet send them to me empty because they only lube them for smokeless powder. But I lubed it for black powder, did that at home, pan lubed them. And the second thing that uh, was very fortunate, and you may have heard me talk about this before, my friend that had a, owned a hardware store and also was a cartridge and gun collector, I was talking to him about the 38 Smith & Wesson cartridge. And he goes, you know, I might have some at home. I'll send them to you. So he sent those, uh, what he had laying around at home to me. Very luckily, there were five of them that were the old-fashioned balloon head case. So I'm going to draw that balloon head case for you. Uh, but that, what that allows, though, is that balloon head case allows for powder to go around the primer, where the primer comes in from the, from the bottom. It just has a higher capacity, and I'll put that on a diagram, and we'll talk about that in a second. So I could get my 15 grains of 3F Old Ainsford in those balloon head cases. And so without nearly the compression, I mean, they didn't have to compress that hard at all. Bullet sets right on top with, a, with the lubrication in the grease groove. And now I've got a historically correct bullet. I think it was much closer than what I was shooting last time. So I hate to go back up and have to do a second run at it, but I also hate to have a really a, a improper or incorrect image of the 38 Smith & Wesson as well. So I also have the solid head cases. And those cases, I have two different varieties where you can give them a try. Uh, I've loaded it up with 13 grains of 3F Old Ainsford, compressed that. Uh, 13 grains compressed pretty easy, uh, but it did compress significantly. 
So I loaded up some others with the with 12 grains of 3F Old Ainsford and that needed to be compressed just slightly and the bullet set down on top. And that's the, the key to black powder cartridge is to do, when you have a, a, a compressed charge or any kind of a black powder charge, you want your bullet setting on it. You don't want space in between your, your bullet and the black powder. And I could do that with 12 grains. Easily the bullet reached the, the powder, compressed it just slightly. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to draw this balloon head case. I've done this uh, in the past in a different video, but it became a factor again in this one. So if this is my case, come down like that, there's my rim on the top of my case. If I've got a balloon head case, I've got the primer pocket sticking right up into here. Now that looks pretty much the same as, as any other case, except that the, around the primer pocket, all this space here and all this space here is open. So the primer pocket sticks up into the bottom of the case, leaving the sides open so you can hold a little bit more, a few more grains of, of powder. That's why I, this time around I was able to get the 15 grains of old Ainsford in there without the heavy duty compression I had to do the last time. So if you look at a solid head case, very much, well exactly what we have today, that's what they are, solid head cases. And we've got a solid head across here. This is all brass, and the only thing drilled out is the primer, primer pocket, and here's the touch hole right in there. So your ignition hole's in the center, your primer sticks into a, this is all solid. And so the only place the powder can go is above the primer, up into here. Here powder can go down into the bottom as well, all the way around in 360 around that primer pocket. So that's a balloon head case, and folks will say, well, that's kind of cool. You get more powder in it. Why wouldn't you just stick with the balloon head case? Well, they're a little more fragile, and they don't reload as often. And as many times, you'll, they'll, they'll rupture on you, and they'll break free. And uh, the bottoms of them just aren't, don't obviously have as much support as the solid head, so that's why we're with the solid head today. So I'm going to experiment with each one of those. I might swab the barrel out between cylinders full so, so that the last one we test uh, isn't going through 15 rounds of fouling when the you know other ones were, were much less fouling. So after each cylinder, I might just run a rod down the barrel uh, real quick and clean that up. All right, let's give these balloon head cases a try with the 15 grains of old Ainsford 3F powder. Six eighty two and being very, very consistent. All right, shot number four. Last shot. Shot number five. All right, well, there's the, uh, there's the first five shots out of those balloon head cases of the 15 grains. <clears throat> I can tell you, uh, the bullet powder highly compressed uh, last time uh, appears to have had a factor because now we're at 691, right around 685 the whole time. Recoil is substantially stiffer than the last time we were out here with the first, uh, first round. And... Uh, the only thing that puzzles me, I got a plate out there at 30 feet, and I am yet to hear a ding. So where in the world it's going from the chronograph to the plate, which are in line with each other, and uh, I don't know yet. So uh, I'm gonna do a quick, quick swab of the barrel. We're gonna throw in the next round. All right, I got a quick swab down the barrel, and uh, just wanted to get this to be kind of fair from cylinder to cylinder full. So I got another five shots that are in here, 38 Smith & Wesson with 12 grains of 3F uh, old Ainsford. So let's see, this is a solid head case. Let's see what this, uh, what this round does and, uh, and we'll go from there.
All right, well we are. We are definitely seeing that our velocity has gone up over the over the highly compressed rounds we tried in the last video. So I'm I'm pleased with this. That was the 12 grains. I'm going to run another swab down the barrel here just to give this last five kind of a, a, a fair shake here, and we'll try the 13 grain and go from there. But uh, already seeing there's a substantial pop to the to the recoil that wasn't there last time, and we're seeing that in the in the velocities themselves and so we're doing much better than we did before it uh, really it's a, it kind of jumps in your hand it's not as pleasant to shoot as it was last week still not bad but it's certainly given us the power that we need uh, for a self-defense arm so let's go ahead and uh, I'll swab these out real quick put in five of the 13 grain that are a little more compressed and see what that did for us all right I'm going to drop in five more rounds this is the 13 grains of uh, 3F Old Ainsford, and we'll see it's, of course, a little more compressed because of the higher powder content that I had to put in there. Uh, a little bit more compressed because of that. Solid head cases. And let's see what we get. Well, it'd be hard to argue that this didn't make a difference, that's for sure. Uh, having the properly lubricated lead bullet without the molly-coated modern bullet and uh, kept the fouling a little softer. Not compressing the powder so extremely. Uh, I can tell right away I've got better velocities than I did in the last video. And so we'll process this, uh, put those energies out there for each of these shots, comparing to our, to our past. Uh, pocket pistols and then uh, hopefully we can we can move on I uh, I got one more pistol I want to test and that's the 1862 police pocket revolver or pocket police we call it now so I don't need to go over this in any great detail on every single video but just as a reminder uh, foot pounds of energy equals the mass of the bullet times the velocity squared divided by our constant and so as we were shooting the Smith & Wesson number two single action and 38 Smith & Wesson, we have a 150 grain bullet and had an average velocity with the 15 grains of powder in the balloon head cases of 681 feet per second. And so we came out of that trial running our, those figures through our, uh, through our formula and came up with 155, about 155 foot-pounds of energy in those balloon-headed cases. So now we're getting a little more respectable, a little more what we kind of felt like I, I should have got in the last trial. And so I kept going, uh, as you saw, with the solid head cases, 12 grains, and a slight compression there, and I had about 117 foot-pounds in, in that. And then went on to the 13 grain, a little more compressed, of course, because it's the same case, and so I put a little more powder in it, had to... Uh, compress that a little more for the bullet to fit had almost identical velocities and almost identical foot pounds as well so really what that tells me is uh save that grain of powder that that uh from 12 to 13 really makes no no difference whatsoever so that's what we got from our smith and wesson number two single action and 38 smith and wesson so looking at the three revolvers we've tested so far our Smith & Wesson model one and a half and 32 Smith & Wesson gave us about 63 foot-pounds energy. And then we took a look at the 1849 Colt pocket revolver and our best load there gave us about 90 foot-pounds of energy. And I took the, the historic load to compare this and I think we're a whole lot closer uh, to what would have been the, uh, the, the load that you would have pulled out of a box in the 1800s with that 38 Smith and Wesson and we've jumped up to 154 foot pounds of energy so uh, a lot more potent than than that first trial remember that very first trial with the Smith and Wesson 38 was only 69 foot pounds of energy 
now we're looking at 154 and so I think we're a lot closer of course this is one load one one test with that you could play around with it different kinds of powder or a ton of things you could do uh, but when this simple test we saw a huge huge jump in foot pounds of energy and so uh, definitely over compressed loads and and a, the wrong bullet quite possibly is a huge factor so this has been a, a kind of a monumental video my my cameraman went to college and so uh, luckily I didn't have to do this by myself and so I've got uh, my graduate student daughter running running the running the camera this time and and uh, my son is is experienced in his freshman year in college or starting that freshman year in college and so uh, I think we did just fine it did a lot better than than uh, with me by myself so uh, really appreciate you watching and we'll continue to make these videos into the fall and uh, continue to put those on the Frontier Western Heritage channel. If you like the video hit that thumbs up button encourage your friends to uh, take a look at it and subscribe and just want to thank you for coming. A pretty pretty oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Shoot. I never think I have that much to say, but I always do. So if I draw here, can you see? Okay, and you, is it running? Okay. All right, so I'm going to take a look here, and, and uh, I'm not going to take a look. You're going to take a look. Uh, I'm going to do a quick, quick swab of the barrel. We're going to throw in the next round, which will be the, uh, the, um, what do you call those cases? I already... Rolling, rolling, rolling.